Hi, this is Bill, and I'm here to tell you all about the Caves and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Podcast. This is DG Chichester, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Podcast. <laughs> Hello, kids. That's right. It's time for your favorite show again, The Capes and Lunatics. Hello. Welcome back. Anyway, I am... Damn. Poor men of Florida. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that go-go dancer from New Jersey. It is... Charlie, the Professor Esser, S-P-H-R. And this Take No Prisoners in Florida, it is. You know Florida woman herself, little hellfire. Signing on. You know, you know who I am. What uh, episode number is this? And who's coming at us from uh, Philadelphia there? Yeah. Um, if you mean Pittsburgh, that would be I, Bill Podcast Parrot. Yes. Okay. But who's you so, here? Uh, you're you're here. That's from Pittsburgh. Come on. I don't Everybody know. Knows you're in the room. Oh my God. <laughs> I've been in lots of rooms, Phil. I, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm starting to think Moz is his uh, chauffeur. I'm just saying, I, I am it's celebrating. Chaparral. We, we thought it was the other way around. So he took him. Take, take some dude. Take me to Phil. <laughs> Mods no, I don't car. think Mods knows how to drive. Whoa! I Mods don't know if he does. Or maybe he knows how to drive, but I think I always drive. I don't know. I can't remember <laughs> if, I, if I ever had him drive when we were driving. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, see, he lives on Staten Island, and most people on Staten Island drive, but he, that is part of oh, New York still, so you don't yes, yes, necessarily right. have to. And it may be that he can drive. He just doesn't drive that much, you know. I, I don't know. You know, it's like it, yeah, it really is. It really is. Trust me, I was in New York today, and yeah, it is a hassle, even oh. with ample parking, like in Queens. I'll have to cut this out and send it to him. Welcome to the Moz Manzor podcast. <laughs> you could do a whole podcast. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know you could do. You know, I know. It's I legally know. admissible evidence. Absolutely That's not. What I like to hear. Uh, oh, Phil, all right. You, said you had some results or something. That's right. Um, before we get to oh, our uh, top, <laughs> before we get to our big topic, turn your mic up. Before we get to our big topic, uh, all right, kids. If you, you may have heard a few days ago when we did the draft for the uh, superhero movie reviews, we're going to be doing on Patreon. Uh, and we decided to start with the Marvel movies. We came up with a list of twelve half our patrons and social media. To whittle that down the half to six. So I have the results. All right. So, all right. The, the movie that got the majority of votes, that got six votes, uh, is Captain America with Matt Salinger from 1990. It's a classic. It's a classic. Got the most votes. Yep. That's Which J.D. Selinger's son, you know. Oh. Got some real literary cred there. No, no. All right. Uh, so, yeah, that got six votes. And, and then second place coming in with four votes, ironically, uh, Fantastic Four from 2015. I'm sorry. No, you mean Fan... Fan... Four, fan... Fan... Four stick. Fan... Four stick. Whoa! Keep that four, stick, four stick. It's because the four is in the middle after the T, so it's four. Fan four stick. Talk about fancy. Fan four. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Talk yeah, that's putting, a good one. That's a good one. Four in the middle. Talking about putting lipstick on a pig. 
All right, so that's number two. All right, number three. We had a tie for for uh, the third spot, so that will be third, fourth, and fifth. All right, and so with, with three vote three votes apiece, in no particular order, Electra, Blade Trinity, and X Men Apocalypse. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say that of that group, Blade Trinity is the most watchable. I'd probably agree with that. It's It's got Ryan Reynolds in it, man. And anything with Ryan Reynolds in it is infinitely more watchable because Ryan Reynolds is in it. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the drop, Lil. Ryan Reynolds can get it. <laughs> I'm just saying, that was the deal he made with the devil. And, you know, just make me watchable. I'll one. sell you my... I'll sell you my soul just to help me uh, fix uh, what it, what happened in no, X Men. Uh, uh, the <laughs> oh, the cheekbones, yes. And he sold his soul to get out of uh, X Men Origins Wolverine. Help me fix it. Sold his soul to get out of uh, Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place. Oh, um, but that's how the devil tricked him. He just got him out of the pizza place. Because <laughs> that's what the devil does. All right, so there's five movies, and for the last one, there was another tie, which I threw to our patrons who broke the, the tie. So the tie for the last place was Ghost Rider, Hulk, or Howard the Duck. Ooh. And like I said, our patrons broke the tie. So the sixth movie will be Howard the Duck. Aww. You know, it was hard fought, but it was well-deserved. Um, I know, kind of know. Hulk, but yeah, they yep. Yeah, two, two of three patrons picked Howard the Duck. So, you know, I'm gonna say this about Angley's Hulk. It's stylistic. That's that was what it had going for it, and that was at a time where stylistic was not as popular. I mean, granted, yes, you could say that they did that with Creep Show, uh, you know, back in you know 20 years earlier, but still. Using the comic panel framing, that was uh, that was new for fancy films. Cold wet uh, hard movies. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, like I said, hard fought victory. But I, 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 I'm pleased with our with our group of a uh, group of contenders. I'm interested to see who they're going up against. Because remember, I, I do think that one of these will be going up against some of the indie blocks that we'll be setting up as well. Well, I figure by the end, it'll be what? We'll have one Marvel winner, one DC winner, and one indie winner. So they're, you know, they're all going to be clashing. So, Well, no, we should have one. I mean, really, either Marvel or DC will get knocked out of it. and Or the indie will get knocked out of it. And it'll just be who's ever left. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to come down to two movies. So, it yeah. comes down to two. So we got the three groups. You're going to have some fighting between Marvel and DC and you know, and the indie indie uh, groups when we break up what the actual stats are going to be. I don't know, Charlie. Yes, remember it's for the worst movie, and some of those DC movies suck pretty hard. So, yeah, well, you know, but again, the indies, that- the indies are indies for a reason, my friend. I know, I know. So yeah, we'll just have- we allowed Puma Man in there, so. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll, we'll have we'll have to figure out, you know, right now which Marvel movies go against which Marvel movies. We can talk about that later, but I think we should keep the result private at least for the year, you know. So people have to pay the pay for the Patreon to find oh, out course, the results. Yeah, no, absolutely. I just want to get I want to get our, ourselves a little done, then we'll do our matchups. We can show everyone the matchups, and then if they want to find out how the matchups are going. They can pay the extra, they can pay their nickel and uh, or dollar or five dollars and find out. <laughs> Got to pay at least three to get to any audio, so <laughs> better pay three. There we go. So three dot three measly dollars a month, and you get not just this, but all the audio, including topless movie reviews and uncensored. Yes, yes, uncensored topless movie reviews. There's well, no black bar. Well, There's nothing. Girl wants to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you get them full. Cold, wet, hard nipples. Exactly. All right. So that was All right. fun. Yes. All right. So should we want to, should we get to our topic by as decreed by the queen herself? Uh, I mean, there was nothing else to talk about. Was there something else you guys wanted to talk about? Feel free. No. 
No. Nah, there's always something to talk about, but this is interesting because it is an interesting <laughs> tale from the business world. Lilith, do you want to tell us the tale? Do you want Phil to? Do you want me, who has not read the article, to just go <laughs> off on a nut and a rant for five five hours about this is an outrage and how dare they he start? The... Yeah, yeah, so what's going on? <laughs> Well, it seems the CW network is up for sale. Warner's, I guess Warner's is going to let that go, or yeah, they're, it's... well, they're going to retain minority, minority. Did nobody read the damn article? They're going to retain minority stakes with Nexstar okay. more than likely becoming the majority stakeholder. Uh, Nexstar is basically the equivalent of like WGN and uh, TBS. They're like pretty much a powerhouse Ooh. super station that carries the CW and multiple different affiliates. You okay, see, but you see <laughs> that means. That's Sven Gulli. That is that whole Me TV group, maybe. I'm I'm guessing, you know. Those are separate groups, but very similar. Yeah, but I think they have some. They got to have some tie in because I know Sven Gulli was a WGN pro- property for a while. And for what it's worth, Sven Gulli, beloved in the in the Warner's uh, catalog, even though he plays most Universal monster films. So what? So, so what does this bode for the uh, Arrowverse? Well, I definitely cool? think that this. Oh. Yeah, they got new stuff starting soon. Hey, chart. Oh, oh I mean, oh, the he verse. Has to, the verse. To hit the top yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the shows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, because obviously Legends will go forever. And that is technically the Arrowverse. Oh, God. It's Flash nothing Arrow. but Arrowverse's discards. What are we, what are we talking about? <laughs> Oh, but, it's what's, but what's left? We can't we can't find a show for each of you individually. So here, share a show. Hey, they're happy to have the work. Burn. They even let the other guy come back who's not Constantine. So Ooh. he's happy. <laughs> not Constantine is very happy to have work. I don't have to be Constantine and I get to work. That's everything I want in life. Oh, but guess what starts on Tuesday, Charlie S. Sir? Uh, Robin, the series? No, 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 no. Uh, Naomi. Oh, Naomi! Now, that's a good question. Where's Naomi following this? Is she within that Arrowverse proprietary universe? Because, I mean... So, right now, Supergirl and Superman are in the Arrowverse, right? Because they... Well, the Supergirl... They're in the Flash. HBO Flash Max universe. has Lois and Superman, though. So if that gets taken off CW, that's going to go straight to HBO Max. Yeah, but that's all part of the same... Same same Berlanti verse, is what I'm saying. No, no, no. Well, I mean, just because Berlanti is a producer, Titans is actually separate from the Arrowverse. So, well, yeah, but what but I'm saying is... he is still a producer over there. Superman well, and Lois is tied to Supergirl. It's tied well, to the Flash. Well, you know what? The but not really. Yeah. I mean, those characters were in other shows, but the actual Superman and Lois show, I mean, well, the only real crossover they did is they had Diggle on there for an episode, but uh, uh, and Supergirl's over, so uh, I mean, I'm just saying, but they're yeah. officially in, in existence in these universes, and for what it's worth, the Naomi story, if it follows anything like the comics, is about humans in the flyover countries. Oh, wouldn't it be great if we get some nice, uh, some nice um, powerless references there about flyover countries? Uh, there we go. You know, because gone too soon. You may be uncancelable, but power, uh, powerless wasn't. I'm uncancelable. Ah. <laughs> it still lives on Tubi, and I'm grateful for that. But no, I think Lil. So if, if anything gets taken off of CW and put on HBO Max, it would probably be Superman and Lois, Star Girl, and Naomi. Correct? I don't know about Naomi. I, I haven't really checked Ooh. the deal on that one. Considering that okay. Brian Michael Bendis actually isn't involved, and they gave him Legion of Superheroes animated show, seems a little Ooh. sketched. So I'm not sure about that. I'd have to kind of do a deep dive on that one. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, whatever they're gonna do. So. Here's what I'll say. So when you talk about the CW, now the CW actually own any stations, or is the CW a licensed product? Not dissimilar from MeTV, which is that um, you know a small a small wattage station 
pays CW for content, and that just gives them their evening blocks. Um, mm -hmm. But that during the yes, day they can run correct. other things. Yeah, so that's... So Although that's I think than... technically it has to be either a WB or a CBS product like Big Bang or something like, or, you know, How I Met Your Mother, something like that before. Like that that six to eight, that six to eight slot, they have to run something like that. But before that, they can run whatever they want. Yeah, see, but yeah. And, and that's but that's the thing is there, I think like when you go into that model because that and again that's the that's that's the Fox the model affiliate. first and foremost. Well, before I mean, they but Fox the actually owned stations, yeah. But that was the thing is that Fox eventually owned stations. Yeah, because that CW be just thing. didn't make it that long to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they never wanted to. That was the thing. I think that basically the no, idea, they haven't they, turned they, a profit since two thousand and six. They couldn't do it. They well, were always wanting to do too. seven day a week programming. They couldn't do it. You mean even yeah. I, you mean even at the height of the Arrowverse, they weren't. I, 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 it. And CW's a thing I, I know a thing or two about. <laughs> Just thank God, I'm, I'm so ready for it to be over. I know Viacom you know, is too because they can never get a good show going on that station. Oh wait, a minute. so so you, so so, if, so you think it's done if so who, if someone buys it, it's done. Well, no, I, I, I think though it, it's going to be like me TV. It's just going to be old stuff. <laughs> it's just Arrow, constantly. But the Arrow versus Arrow be done. is their first and primal their their primary streaming stuff is all with Netflix until like twenty twenty six. Oh, uh, okay. So they can't even show those reruns. So you I think they can show the real. TNT better hold on to those supernatural rights for all dear life. That's all I know. Because yeah. HBO Max is chomping at the bit. I mean, I don't know if they still do, but wasn't TNT or somebody showing like Arrow? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't know. That's what I said. I don't know if they. I know they were for a while. I don't know if they still do or not. I, I, I can't really, imagine like any said, company. The ratings probably weren't very good. Mm. Yeah, I I can't imagine any company doing an exclusive streaming deal that does not allow them to sell rerun rights, especially on any new show. Because like like Friends well, is on that, Netflix. They did that way back when. We're, this is like a deal from ten years ago. They're not well, I'm, yeah. So yeah, I, I I think I think they still have rerun rights. It's just not streaming rights. So you can do exclusive to streaming, but not for. Like if well, you just want to license those shows, package. nobody. Yeah, yeah, but do all those deals change too if the if the thing gets sold though? Uh, no, no deals tend I to. I think they have to wait to out the contracts to renegotiate. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there 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 may be some kind of ways to buy out at that time, so that as an example, you know, if someone bought something and it's not making the profits they thought it was. And then the parent company gets sold, then they can come and try to get out of their contract. But well, here's the usually... thing: they're definitely trying to get out of that contract because of the Discovery merger, which is just going to be absolutely a historic cluster frack, where all the axes are going to come swinging down, worse than the AT and T thing. So it's, you know, I feel bad that the yeah. employees had to find out in a memo, and some of them found out on the internet, as is per usual these days. It's just kind of messed up. <laughs> Yeah, I just go well, back you know, to the that's... loyal employees. That's all. That's it. Showbiz, man. Showbiz. It's you know, it, it's it, it's unfortunate, but you know when you know the advantage of a gigantic mega corporation is they get to put out lots of content. The downside is that putting out a lot of content means that every so often you have to scrap everything. You know, well, the and gag that's... is that they haven't been profitable since they merged. Like, everybody yeah. loves, you know, like all the black shows, they were turning a profit. They merged, and all of a sudden, they're not making a profit. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Well, I think that's very interesting. That's the karma. They... That's the business karma. I, and to be fair, I mean, I think that's a very good encapsulation of what went wrong. You know, I mean, it's a very that, you know, you had these you know niche audiences you had these and not really niche but you know 20 percent of the country it's you know it's not the majority but it's a good number of people in this country and you know and if you can speak to them and then get crossover that really works well for you and you can build from that crossover and i think the problem is is that once they once they merged with you know really what i think it is is once they mer merged with upn I think UPN just started doing a much CBS more UPN brought them all the way down, one hundred percent. I've been a firm believer in that. You know, and I think that that is the 
that is the problem there is that I think I think I think the WB had real legs um in the long term I think the WB mm, was a real they want, let's see they, the, the thing with the WB is is that the only thing they had going for them was charm supernatural buffy <laughs> Yeah, these are all really good then. things, though. Yeah, you're, you're like... Buffy was over on like UPN by then, so yeah. But what I'm saying, I don't know. It was a bad. I always thought it was a bad business deal. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I and what I'm saying is, I think, I think, I think Warner's got the got the fuzzy end of the lollipop, as Marilyn Monroe would say. You know, I think that quite frankly, UPN was struggling because they had Star Trek and <laughs> very little else. Enterprise. And and I love Star Trek, but you can't build, you know, you can't Enterprise. build. A network. You can't build a network around Enterprise. Absolutely, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't build. A, yeah, I mean, you can't build a network off of one, one. Well, back in the day, field. you could. They just never updated the business model. And where CW really, See, I don't think you could. That was the thing. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I don't think you ever could build it off of just one thing. I mean, even even like you know, you had lots of different types of when even when fifty sitcoms was what everyone made in the fifties. You had lots of different types of fifty sitcoms, and you had lots of different types of stories you were telling. And you know, it, it's this idea that you have to have this expanded universe. You have to, ha and not just an expanded universe, but you have to have more than one thing in it. You know, if you just had Star Wars or you just had comic book characters, you couldn't have Disney Plus. But you bring all this stuff together, that's how you build out a much larger footprint. But if ev everything you do is just like, well, we'll do another another Star Trek show and we'll have Star Trek on five nights a week, you know, eventually people are going to be like, you know, I've seen a lot of Star Trek already. I kind of, you know, unless you're doing Starfru Starfleet uh, legal and Star Starfleet crime scene investigations, you're going to run into a wall. Because you need your murder shows and you need your other kinds of shows. You can't just have, oh, every so often one of the shows will be a murder show and every so often one of the shows will be a comedy show and every so often one of the shows will be this. No, you need places people can come on a regular basis to see the kinds of shows they want to see. And they they can't be reliant. They can't all be reliant on war. That's all I'm saying, man. No, you know, you need. I don't know. Okay, okay. So here's the question then. You, <laughs> well, you said they haven't turned a profit since 2006, right? So, first couple seasons of Smallville made a profit. I don't know if you got, Well, you guys obviously aren't very familiar with the CW. I know. But I'm just saying. I'm just well, saying. So, so small. Seasons that went too long. I, but I'm saying they made a profit until the merger, and then it just was all downhill. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's what it well, sounds like. Has well, the that, CW only been with us since 2006? No, I think it was a little bit before that or something. I can't remember. 2005. It might have been 2005. I feel like. Um, I oh, no, no, no. So you're saying so the so you're saying that CW has been with us. And then in 2006, the CW stopped making a profit. Yeah, that, that's they what they said in the, in the they, article. They, they, might have, they might have had one good year, yeah. Well, Maybe, Arrow, so. I mean, they had, like, merchandise and stuff, but, like, actual shows, like, being worth it to produce and stuff, it's just kind of... Well, well, and I think that the, the turn of a pointing of events was when they switched their marketing from being the network that was for women, 18 to 36, and then here comes the Arrowverse. That was the really big turning space, and they are just like... Arrow did good, Flash did good for a while, and then it just all really started because they do the same formula. Even Supergirl, like I said, Supergirl was just Felicity with superpowers. Every show is the same, <laughs> with the exception of like Jane the Virgin, which was a CBS show. Um, oh, Crazy Ex Girlfriend was a CBS show. Uh, I think, oh, Walker, the reboot, which is the highest rated show on the network right now, which is not saying much, CBS show. Whoa. <laughs> the only thing that was different, that was getting different, was the CBS shows. Uh, Rain, Beauty and the Beast, everything was super, super different when it was CBS, and that's why they could never really get a good show. And I think that's really, that's really the underlying problem is that CBS Viacom never got a profitable show that lasted more than four seasons with really good ratings, like ever, because <laughs> they were going yeah. against the grain on that formula. 
Yeah. So they started taking their marketing money back and every year got smaller and smaller because none of their shows are seeing a profit. Seems like they try to milk shows for as long as they can. <coughs> bring back, well, I would say bring back Gossip Girl, but they already rebooted on HBO Max and it's trash. But <laughs> I mean, they bring back everything. You know, days, I'm just saying, not for nothing, that, that they learned that the woman market 18 to 36 is very profitable. Just saying. Well, yeah. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, that is half the population. I mean, you know. Yeah, but that's the only show that specifically was like that was their that was their motto, that was their goal was that those were the shows that were dedicated to that, and not no no other network did that. Well, yeah, but you can't make a whole. As I said, you can't make a whole network. Well, they did, and they learned that it was a mistake to go into superhero business. Period. This is the point that I'm making. Can't switch horses in midstream and expect people to stick around. Well, what I'm saying is, you just don't go into one business. You can, you know, like you could have a thing where it's like, oh, here's the women eighteen to thirty six shows, and here's the superhero shows, and here's a superhero for a woman 18 to 36 and here's the black superheroes and there's this and there's the you know you can do you can do everybody and that's how you have build a network if you try to focus too much on one it thing didn't work is the point i'm making you see that i mean i know i know that's the point you're making work. i mean i mean you, you are both right you you both are right because it's like like charlie is saying you know we could, we could add superheroes one or two nights a week but at one point remember well if the arrowverse was what four nights a week yeah. It was disgusting. I, I stopped watching. Yeah. I didn't care. They milk. They tried to milk it too much. Yeah. They were just like, "Oh, hey, that's popular. Let's put one on every night." And yeah, then sometimes well, you know. two a night. Like, come on. Yeah. I like it when they just did one and one a night, not this two jazz. I like yeah, it when it was on the arrow. Arrow was special. Arrow and Flash. Come on. So you know, like I said what I said. Oh. Oh. Come on. Business, that's Prerogative, either the girls that get it, get it, and the girls that don't, don't. Oh, Amel's abs. <laughs> I okay, make no apologies for what I like. Okay, Amel's no, 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 abs. Okay, fine. Yeah, shirtless I, Mel. Okay, you know, I uh, but yeah, but that's I mean, that is why CW is being sold, that is why this is being spun off because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they don't know what they want to be and they don't want to invest in being better. So this is if there's anything that you can say about everything that ever falls apart, it's usually because of that factor. They don't know what they want to be, and they well, don't want to invest. I'll in go to the old better. internet line. Go get woke, go broke, and I kind of agree on this one. <laughs> I mean, I don't they even. Tried I, too hard. They tried too hard, and it felt disingenuous. Everybody thought it was woke. Well, yeah, well, I guess maybe that's the point: is that if you're if you're gonna be woke, be woke. If you're gonna uh, say, hey, I'm awake, you know, then maybe you're just trying too hard. Nobody likes to try hard. <clears throat> that one. Yeah. <clears throat> Supergirl. <laughs> oh, 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 um, oh, Seasons of Legends, oh, post-season oh, oh, oh. It's try hard, hard and it's cringy, and I hate it. I don't know. I always find, I always, I find Legends to be... I like Legends, Anthony but it's Rock. not what it used to be. No, I need some no, because it used to be me. bad. It used no. to be a bad show. About Only season one was bad. I'm sorry. Because they didn't know what they wanted it to be. And once they realized what the fans wanted and started catering yeah. to the fans, it became a better show. Yeah, well, exactly. And, and what the fans went, wanted then was... Then got woke. So, I don't think it's... Like, uh, here's what I'm going to say. I don't think it's ever woke. I think it's just campy, nonsensical fun. And I think that's what people who do enjoy Legends like about it. Yeah, I, I think that if, if you do a show that's campy, nonsensical fun, that's it. the thing. <laughs> But not five nights a week, you know. That's the thing. You can do that. And I don't I, and see you'll get lives its li no NBC lives its life on freaking in uh, SVU Law and Order universe. I don't know. The Dick Wolf of Oh well, yeah, but those are first of those. Yeah, I mean. Oh, there's one that's a firefighter. Ooh, there's a one that's a medical show, but it's all rape and murder. I'll tell you that. <laughs> There's a drop. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, you you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to necessarily yeah. argue with you on that point. Um, although you got to admit, again, talking about you know women eighteen to thirty six to forty to fifty, women like to see people get murdered. Whoa. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a mystery. No, 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 no. I'll tell you why. It's we look for the warning signs 
and how to defend ourselves. That's why we're so invested. Okay, we got to protect yes. ourselves. We got to know what's going on. The red flags, the warning signs, and you know, heaven forbid the worst happened. How to dispose of a body? I ain't going to jail. Exactly. For you know, I'm just yeah. I, I'm just saying. You got snap. You, know. you got <laughs> that Dateline show. <laughs> I'm just saying ladies love murder. That's all I'm saying. Infer yeah. Informative murder porn. Yes. South Park had it right. Give your wife something. <laughs> Yikes. Anyway. Well, on that note, I am, I'm not sad to see the CW go. It's been a long time coming. Uh, <laughs> I'm just oh. sad for the employees. But they'll, they'll, they'll land elsewhere. It'll go on in some kind of weird form. And HBO Max will pick up all the shows worth picking up. So is this a bad sign for DC Comics? I think with this DC Discovery merger, heads are going to roll somewhere. We're expecting another bloodbath any month now. I mean, it, it goes I mean, the deal goes live in three months. So I mean, did you see that link I sent you like an hour ago? It's uh every every DC book coming up this week this uh this coming week is either Batman or Batman related. You know, like a Harley Quinn or something. So <laughs> they'll get it. They'll get it when they get it. I mean, if something needs to burn to the ground to be rebuilt, that's fine with me. It's been a long time coming for DC Comics. <laughs> yeah. If you ain't going to innovate, if you ain't going to poop, get off the pot. That, that's all I have to say about it at this point with DC. We saw it coming, but yeah, this week, everything is Batman going to be Batman or Batman related. What the F? Be sure to listen to We Are the Night. The Moon. Oh, my God. Did I say Oh, that? how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Ray's worked Please his magic know. on you. How do you do that? I was just Conchie. listening to Oh, okay. Anyway. All right. So, should we get. Yes, call. Oh, okay. somebody get that meme of Grant resting over the grave and put CW on the name now. Yes. <laughs> I need that meme. I'll, I'll create it myself if I have to. Bill's Comics Corner. Fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> oh, good thing I know snapping over to CW. So speaking of DC, do you want to know what was a really good DC book I picked up this week? Um, what is, is it that a book from this week? Let me yeah, guess. One, one Star Squadron? No, no, no. Oh, Ooh. although do we thought we talked about One Star Squadron, didn't we? Yeah, but I thought the second one was out this week. I thought. Oh, is it? Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't see it when I was there. I got a lot of books yeah. this week, so. Yeah, number I, two is out this week. Okay, I will pick it up. Next week, I will read it, uh, and then I will, if it's, I will probably put it on my pull list because this week, a uh, Suicide Squad showed up. <laughs> Ambush bug. The entire book and narrated by Ambush Bug. It is beautiful. It is perfect. It is, you know. It, it it is it is it is a book for me. It is wonderful and delightful, and I enjoy it. Um, the, the 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 fight the retaliators on Earth. Uh, I think they said Earth Eight. Um, and you know, so Ambush Bug gives all of his little things, and uh, they have a character here who's very violent and. Starts killing people, but then when the Avengers get knocked away, or sorry, the Retaliators get knocked away, uh, who should come to do the to be the criminals that handle the dirty work? It's the lightning strikes. Oh wow! Yeah. So that's cool. But what I'm really excited about, what I'm most excited about, is there's. Uh, this guy, Blood Pouch. Whoa! Whoa! Clearly Deadpool. Come again? Which means we may just get our Deadpool uh, ambush bug crossed over here. Out of the pouch. Boing. Yes. Thank you. So I am very excited by all of this. This is going to be fun. And uh, I don't know, man. I Like I said, I love Ambush Bug and all he does. He's great. He's the best thing DC Comics owns. Best bit of intellectual property that they've never really grown or utilized. And uh, that is their failing. I'll be honest with you. That is their failing. Uh, that's an but, interesting artistic choice. But that's a DC 
Suicide Squad number 11 Earth versus Earth 8's Mightiest Heroes, the Retaliators. All right, little Hellfire. That's good thing DC made. Oh. <laughs> All right, Lil, hit us up. Um, it was a small week for me. That's what she said. Uh, there was a number one that I read. I'm trying to find it. Hold on. It was by Image and Philip. I do not want this as a drop. I swear to God, I will. I will come up there, punch you, and leave. It's Monkey Meat number one. Damn you. Grow up, Philip. Why would that be a drop? Yeah, Lilith, why would that be a drop, you dirty pervert? Sure, sure. It's an it's a anthology series. It's written by Junie Ba. Um it's uh it's, it's weird and wacky. It gives you very much um like old Hanna Barbera, but with like an anime twist kind of style, if you can picture that. So I mean, I'm not trying to get invested in a world too heavily anymore these days. So anthology series work for me. Just jump from, you know, each issue is going to be different characters. So I'll give it a chance. Sounds interesting. Sounds good to me. I appreciate you trying to be a grown-up Philly podcast. (laughs) Uh, Hey, I'm mature. (laughs) (laughs) You hear that revival's coming this year? Again? Oh, we have oh, to. Oh, I, just, I just hope that they're all like middle aged now. I think it said that. I think they are going to be I hope like grown up. Comes back and kills them, honestly. <laughs> Sorry. Fire. <laughs> all right. Speaking of ever expanding worlds, Lilith, did you read Spawn three twenty five? Of course, of course, of course, of course. How could I pick up an image issue and not go, go grab my Spawn too? You know. So. That was okay. Hard to believe. I mean, yeah, I'm still excited. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, the, there's good issues, and then every so often it feels like, I mean, especially this, I mean, the main spawn book now almost seems like set up sometimes because you got King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn. I guess Scorched is coming soon. Gunslinger Spawn or... is the best. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm enjoying that the most so far. Yes. Heck yeah. Excellent pick. <laughs> But, uh, so I guess Scorched is coming soon because it wasn't supposed to be out in like December or something, which I guess is going to be the team yeah. book, like all of them. Yeah. You know, holiday delays. It's fine. Blame yeah. UPS. Who cares? I mean, is is McFarland trying to grow this thing too fast again, or is or is this the right time? No, to I think throw it's long overdue. And I want more merch, and I want my movie, and I want another animated show. And you know, the only way to do that is to saturate the zeitgeist. You got to overcome your Spider-Mans and your Batmans. So be in front and center in front of the comic book people's faces all the time with new stuff. Like, hey, what's this? More Spawn? Okay. Can't oh, yeah, be worse than what Batman's doing right now. Oh. You me. know, I, I don't know. See, that, that, that I, I think love is, Batman. That's an interesting question about market saturation. And, you know, whether or not you need a Batmite. Mm-hmm. To get market saturation, whether or not you need to have versions of your characters that can go beyond a single note to be, like, do you need Spawn Baby? Do you need Baby Spawn? Do you need Do you need to go? You need completely... little wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. You know, I, I think I think that you know, if there's anything that's missing from that universe, it is. You know, a diversity of things in that universe, you know? Hey, it's like a comic. He agrees with you. Bring back Batmite. You know, and Whoa. and hello, Justin. You know, and uh, you know, I, I'm I I'm just saying, you know, it's it I think it's helpful when you have more than one thing and you know, like I said, it's it's shocked me that we've never had a sitcom based in the Star Trek universe. And it's a little bit disturbing to me when you think about the fact that you really could do that very easily. But no one's ever thought to just make something that's just wacky and sci-fi, but based in that in the in the established lore of a Star Trek universe, you know? I mean, oh, from outer space? Space? Well, but that's what not based in the lore of it. That's, I mean, 
no, I mean, and hey, for what it's worth, that's one thing. Although that was, you know, that was what it was, and I'm not going to judge it too harshly. You know, that's the thing. It's like you'll get sci-fi comedies, but you never have an, so, and that's sort of like a thing that I find with like genre properties. It's like Marvel Comics will have books that just run that gamut from dark to light to silly to fun to completely campy to completely you know mind effery and that i think is what makes you build a brand that diversity of story to tell because even if you find that murder shows are selling well this year and you're going to do 10 murder shows you're still going to make sure you have some stupid sitcoms on there too because you know what people like to watch sitcoms too you could easily do a Star Trek sitcom. It's like, what are people doing on Earth in the 24th century? Yeah, well, I mean... Star Fleet. And to be fair, that's what the Orville kind of is, and that's why the Orville was... I think I think the Orville filled a niche for people that was so needed in that Star Trek universe that no one ever got and did well. So, you know, I think that's sort of where we find ourselves today. You know, we're Viacom takes so, the property too seriously. We're just now getting like actual animated comedy shows within the Star Trek universe. So, I mean, it's been how many years now? How many decades? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even and the original fair, animated right, show right. was kind of very serious, you know. And you know, and here's and here's the thing. This is this is how new it is. I love below, uh, Lower Decks. Below, yeah, Lower Decks. There's a reality show Nothing called Below Decks. One? This. No, they don't have another. No, the Prodigy Animated Prodigy show? isn't Prodigy is a kids show, which oh, is okay. a good show too. By the way, I do like Prodigy, and I think I the, isn't it? Don't they? Is it, uh, it? I mean, I think it's on Paramount, is but that it's the like one Jane yeah. Is on, or is it yeah, that's, that's got, it's it, and, yeah, it's the it's the emergency it's the training hologram that's modeled after the character of uh, the great Captain Jane Rant way. When in doubt, f stuff up. Oh, to be and fair, it, that's the Cisco model as well. So, and it's, and it's all Paramount, but isn't it like a Nickelodeon thing? Yeah, it's a Nickelodeon. Well, they own Paramount. Well, previous... owns Nickelodeon too, so that's uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's part, part of the, the whole family. family. But that, but, but that's the thing. So, like, just now we're getting this stuff, and it's like you've had this stuff for years. Although, to be fair, and I'll say this again, at my first Star Trek convention, when um. Braga was there. They said, "Who wants to just see a sitcom about Ferengi?" And everyone just cheered because that's what everyone wanted—a sitcom about wacky Ferengi. And they're as long as he didn't dress as a woman again, we'll we'll all forget that and let that be. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just saying that there's been a desire for comedy in the Star Trek universe for years. That even even you can even say that the Star Wars universe already did comedy. Um, the holiday well, special, absolutely. With the holiday <laughs> special, and then all of the Lego adaptations, you know, which always have a delightful sense of comedy. Um, this the Star Wars holiday special. So you said Star Trek needs a Lego movie. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, really, Lego has saved so many properties. Because, you know, and you know what it does is it gets kids interested. And that is the hardest thing in the world of genre programming. Is how do you get the next, because old people are going to die eventually. Oh, yeah, especially these days. No, that's why we're yeah. doing cryogenics now. We, and we are we're nowhere all near all that. All that, 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 that. <laughs> you know, unless, you, unless you're getting the whatever injections in your in your in your in your pituitary gland it's like you know and who can afford that lilith um, uh two people bezos and elon have fun with each other <laughs> that is uh, next book, very Phil. sad porn what um next book philip <laughs> Well, I brought Swan, so we're up to the charlie esser again oh it's me again okay oh, uh yeah. do you want do you want one of my indies what do you want, like, like, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, well, let's talk. Uh, okay, here, let's talk. Uh, this was actually from last week. Uh, one of my, but it is is rising in my in my delightful uh, uh impossible Jones. Nope. Um, and it's a very interesting 
superhero parody from the perspective of a villain that gains superpowers and starts to masquerade as a superhero. It's very interesting how it all plays out. And we first when we get like her established status and then the previous status, which is her origin, and we get mostly all back to the origin in this one, where she has realized that now she has like, you know, that basic I can manipulate my body structure. Um uh powers, you know, and her clothes and all this stuff. She's kind of like Plastic Man, I think. Maybe a little closer to Mr. Fantastic, but it is very interesting. You see, she does oh, change her outfit. Man. Gotcha. Well, because she, no, she can change her outfit, too. And, like, repeatedly, she alters the molecular nature of her outfit. So, um, and basically, everyone is thinks she's dead. She can she's put pockets and everything. Today. She's a dream woman. Yes. Well, speaking of pockets, my friend, the hey. thing that she was actually sent there to s steal, it's holes in space. Just pockets you can put on anything. Um, so that's going to that's gonna come back. Um, and uh, Impossible Jones, she is looking to figure out who, uh, who, who, who set her up. Uh, she goes and meets what they call the monster, or or is it, I don't is he the monster? Is, no, the monster was the guy who sent him on this. But this guy, uh, who doesn't know how to work, is he's he's basically a thug. And they go to the they do a nice little bit here where he doesn't know how to use his microwave. He says, "Hey, I'm I'm because he's basically a refugee from another planet." And he's like, "Hey, I was militia. I wasn't science corps." Yeah, everyone sees the pointy ears. They all think we're Mr. Spock, but you know, I know how to shoot people, and that's his thing. And um, really, you know, goes to talk to uh, the lady who was the brains behind the outfits to see if she set them up, but realizes she's not the one who set her up. And then we get, and I don't know if this guy's a hero or a villain, but our last scene is the Saint of Knives. Who throws a knife at uh, at Impossible Jones and really annoys her because she's bulletproof, but she's not knife proof. Which for anyone who knows anything about uh, bulletproof stuff knows that actually that is very true, because bullets flatten and knives don't. And then we get the backup here with Mark Question questioning about Persephone, who's like the hereditary, uh, you know, protector of New Hope City. Um, and all the questions that Mark question has about her. So it's got a lot, it's two issues in, and there's a lot of fun lore already. So I really like Impossible Jones number two. Little oh, fun. I, I want to save the best two DC stories, uh, for you know our JSA J, JLA podcast. So okay. I did think that uh, Justice Incarnate was the best DC story. This week. Okay. But did you pick up World of Krypton number two? No, I did not. Did you, uh... it, it gives you some fuzzy feelings, but I don't think I'll be picking it up. I shan't be picking it up again. Ooh. I'm, I'm out on Superman. I'm just out. I don't know. I'm just kind of sick of, like, you know, the origin every two to three God, years. Yes. Know? It's like, bro, I watched Smallville for 10 years. I. Don't have time for blue balls on that anymore. I'm over it. Wow, well, it's like everyone knows it. I mean, yeah, there's uh, you know, there's subtle changes. Wait, are every they time. still changing his origin, or are they just like doing a re-origin story? Or when you're bored and lazy, what do you do? Ooh, let's do an origin story. Because you know this you can just put that in, like on the inside cover. You can put like you know, strange visitor from another planet. Everyone, everyone wants to do their take. You know, next thing you know, those pearls are going to be hitting that street again. Oh, no, we're already getting the Batman movie. You know. Oh, I know. They're gonna be so no, they're not even going to have the death of the wind. They're going to. They're going to do the Spider-Man model. Yeah, we're not right. even going to talk about who died. I think it's no. literally mandatory that you have to. No, I don't think. I think. I think. I, think, no, I literally point. think it's. The law in in the freaking Warner Brothers studio life. You're doing it back, even if it's in somebody else's movie. You gotta he's, show it. He's, he's gonna. They wait never up. did it in the 1960s Batman movie. They mention it. 
they make it clear why he started his war against crime, but they never show it. Well, they're going to show it. (laughs) Well, you know, but, you know, sometimes tell don't show. I'm just going to say that. You know, tell don't show. Sweetie, no. It's Look, easy we're talking about. I want to believe in better artists doing I, better look, things. Listen, I don't. I, I. I. don't hope for anything. I just. I set my bar very low, and they still disappoint me. I don't know what, what to tell you. <laughs> Somebody was trying to sneak it in. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm over. If I was a bigger yeah, fan, I might argue with you, but. I'm not, so I can't. It, exactly. So. Pull it out unless yeah. you're going to use it. That's true for guns. are real for the most part, except for those Snyderverse sticker fans. Oh, I know. I, I don't like, know where they came from, but they can go they're... wherever the hell they came from. <laughs> they're still screaming for bringing back the Snyderverse. Meanwhile, it's like Affleck's done with it. You don't want to. You don't want to do it anymore. And I think isn't uh, Henry Cavill out? And it's just like, dude, they're half of you know half of those people are gone already, and they're still crying for their Snyderverse. Doom they're Patrol just crying for his. Whoa! Whoa! They're, they're riding that mustache pretty long and hard here at this point. So you never forget your first mustache. Whoa! Eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows. Last mustache standing, Charlie Esser. <laughs> Ain't nobody I'm gonna agree to my mustache way. I'm uncancelable. Uh, Hey, I'm still here, man. No. All right. Uh, it seems like it's been a while since we got an issue of this. Uh, Black Widow 13 by friend of the show, Kelly Thompson. Oh. That was my favorite Marvel book this week, for sure. Right up there with it, Electra. I think it's a I tie. Mean, it, yeah. It, it, it was a flashback that, you know, that given us her first fight with this new villain. But I, I like it. It's really good, you know, because it's just a big fight in Madripoor and I love just the exactly. details, you know. It, it's it's a flashback, so she's wearing that '90s costume and everything. And does she have the, the short hair? Things. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I love her with the short hair. Yeah. You don't know about the bob. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's when she was. That's when she and Steve were kind of a thing. And her and Matt were kind of a thing. And she was kind she of. A, she of was things. kind of the Scarlet Spider. Uh, Scarlet Spider. The Scarlet. Which of the you know the Scarlet Witch? Yeah, she, she had a couple. Of, hey, she was a she's a lady in New York City in the nineties. That was with a lot of big, big beefy superheroes. What are you gonna do? Hey, well. You gonna hey. judge her for that? No, never. I ain't judging her. Exactly. But Matt, she could have done better. <laughs> oh, you know he's got that he's got that wounded puppy dog thing. You know, true. Tap, tap, tap him away downtown. Yeah. <laughs> In more ways than one. Uh, oh, and uh, Justin, Justin, I do declare good, sir. She also got in Tony's iron pants. Well, who hasn't? Oh, those pants are pants? very loose. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, come on, who hasn't Tony Stark slept with? Okay, so Black Widow, She Hulk, Gamora, he's, he's basically um, the Oliver Queen of the universe. Oh, he's worse than Oliver Queen. The man is a walking STD. If that Infinity Gauntlet hadn't finished him off, some venereal disease would have. I mean, Marinated to be pepper fair. Pots. Anyway. Oh! Mm. Well, you know, that's pepper always that question. Sucks. Come on. Come on. Well, you know, she's all we got now. Um, but that's oh, okay, because she's just going to be... You know what? She's going to be... Well, act, oh, Well, that's an interesting question after No Way Home. It's like is, is like the next... It, like, you know, with the government seizing of Stark technology and Stark assets. Mm, things could get crazy. Well, that's, you know what? That's what I was thinking. Because it's like, you know, Armor Wars is coming. What did... Okay, the spell, no one knows who Peter is. What did he do with that Stark tech he had in that suit? Because he makes himself just like a regular suit, like we wanted. But it's like, what did he do with that Stark tech? Found it like an idiot. He gave it to the vulture who took it to Morbius. No, he's well. You know, pro- well, actually, what I'm going to tell you probably it, it. You, you 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 want you want the hard truth of it is probably that's that tech is really high maintenance. 
Probably, because it's yeah. all nanotech. And nanotech, I, here's the thing. Like, nanotech sounds great when you have an arc reactor powering its, like, self-replicating cycle. But, like, after a while, it just becomes, like, a little piece of carbon. And it just it just sits there, you know? You know, it's until you can have, like, a neural net. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just going to say it's a little problematic. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, and I think maybe he just... Wanted to get beyond, or maybe he's still got some nanotech in it. And for what it's worth, it may be a fake leak, but there was a leak of a new Marvel Studios poster showing, like, the next, you know, the next phase of Marvel. And it's got, like, you know, Thor's got, like, some kind of weird Thanos-looking costume, and they've got Jane Foster Thor in it, and they've got, and they got Peter in the Iron Spider suit again, so... You know, wishful thinking, my friends. Wishful well, thinking. as people have pointed out, all the superheroes still know about Spider Man. Well, they just don't know. So, he's Peter, yeah, yeah. So, Pepper Potts knows Spider Man. Um, what's his name? Uh, Happy Hogan knows Spider Man. <laughs> Everybody knows Spider Man, you know, and now, but no one knows Peter exactly. So, Spider Man could show up, Peter. And he can do the flip. I said, well, he can be okay. the CGI. They'll, they'll give him the old Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> like, you know, crawl around on the ceiling. Prove you're Spider-Man. It's like, how do I prove I'm Spider-Man? Get the cowboy boy you're up there. Hello. Uh-huh. So did you read Electro Black, White, and Blood number one? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. How do we feel? I I mean I liked it. I, I like mean that the first. Theme. I like the theme. It fits very well. Yeah, I mean the first story was a little weird, but I mean I liked it. I figured figured we'd go into uh in, in more detail next week on uh, DW you know. But yeah, no, I mean yes, yes, of course. I, I like yeah again I like yeah like you said I like the theme. The first one with the vampires was kind of weird, but it was Bagley art, so I was like okay, okay. exactly. It's like I, I'll allow it just this one time. Bagley art. Yeah, Mark Bagley. Oh, uh, bag, uh, the, I, when you said Bagley art. Oh, Bagley art. B A G L E Y. Yeah. No, I thought you said Bagley art. That's Bagley. Bagley. <laughs> no, you said Bagley art. You said, we said Bagley art, but I heard Bagley art, and, and I thought, oh wait, vampire stuff, but it's Bagley art. It's like, oh, is there a vampire named Bagley art? <laughs> what do you like think? What do you think, Charlie? After I floor my words. I'm just saying, your thick Pittsburgh accent is so hard to understand. Yins can't understand. Unless people listen to global, I guess, and Joyzy. Can't, uh, Yins can't understand what I'm saying. Them hoagies out of your ears. <laughs> yeah. I but believe yeah. we call them grinders. I, I think not the devil was oh! trying to What about grinder? What? Uh, what? Well, what? <laughs> You said grinder. No, I said uh, not the devil. The one that was written by Leonardo Romero was the best one to me. Oh, okay. Oh, was that the? Um, hold on, let me flip this through here. I like the. I uh, I like that middle story with like the mob and the little girl. Oh yeah, very John Wick. <laughs> yes. But yeah. Oh no, I'm here for the rest of it. I mean, and that cover for next one looks. Look at that. Beautiful. I hope they make a poster. Like they yes. make the She Hulk poster. If you find the She Hulk poster, I will pay shipping. Again, reminder, reminder. I what, think it's next week. Se- it wasn't out this week. For the new series? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, it's number one out next week. So it wasn't out this week. So. Okay, yeah. Well, the poster is posted. They just said January. You know how that goes. Oh, okay, Those but screens. I thought number one was supposed to be out this month, too. So. Yeah. Got a lot of stuff, man. And. Yeah, yeah definitely. Should, if you haven't picked up that calendar, try to find one. It's a lot of stuff to to go oh. to remind you for anniversaries. You know the Marvel calendar. Oh yeah, yeah. The free in the shops. Yeah, I got mine. Yes. Oh man, I didn't get mine. <gasps> I get mine every year. I always get mine. I guess they took me off the damn card. Oh, I'm gonna yell at them. Where's my Marvel calendar? You have small business owners. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm going to give Charlie up her choice. Are we doing this here or on Super Connectivity? Which one? Oh, we can do it. I can save that for Super Connectivity. Yeah. Okay. Come on. That's first off. It's auto, 
And Phil, it's 59 minutes and 34 seconds already. I don't have time to go <laughs> in to everything that's in that one book in this. I don't want us to run long, Phil. Spoilers. We kid, spoilers. This, kid. this is going to be half of super connectivity Sorry. right here. Half? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be. Well, no, we got, look, we're talking Mockingbird, and what? that lady. Has a lot of history. What I'm saying, half's gonna be Mockingbird, and half's gonna be Amazing Spider-Man '84. I haven't even talked to Elvira meets Vincent Price yet. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. Go ahead. I got lots of book. No, man, we gotta cut this. End the show. Go to with? the next. Phil, Who you the can't fuck? run Phil these things too what long. He's saying? People oh. get bored. They never get to the end. They don't hear the how they can get their Patreon links. Damn, Phil, you're cracking the whip. Who are you, Love Hellfire? <laughs> yeah. All right, kids. So, by popular demand, we're ending the show right now. All right. So, <laughs> send us your thoughts by two thirds majority. Here. We're ending the show. Yes, Petty. All right. Anyway, so yeah, send your thoughts on uh, the CW uh, buyout, the uh, the new comics, hell, new really, every every Batman issue coming out next week. Uh, send us your thoughts. Email us. Capes, <laughs> suck it, right? Anyway, email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 capes. And remember, you can follow Capes and Lunatics on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, find links to all the various social medias for all the shows we do on the Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics sidekicks. Uh, look at those fancy new headers on every uh, social media that went up this week. Uh, so, yeah, find links to all those. Links to this YouTube channel. You think Charlie Esser has a pretty voice. Wait till you see his face. So, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, watch that. Oh, look at Chia Pet Man. Watch that stash grow through the year. Ch -ch -ch Chia. Oh, Chia Pet Charlie. <laughs> oh. We need that. Just the face. You know, I was, That's it. I That's was debating cutting the hair off again, and my wife said, I kind of like it when you have hair. I'm like, uh, oh. No, no. I'm grow the hair. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, please subscribe to the YouTube. Most importantly, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Once again, we're on our own, our uh, our own Tony Stark. Uh, Char Rob Southwood has snapped his fingers, so it's us on our own, just like Peter Parker. Uh, so yes, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Again, creator interviews, Mr. D.D. Chichester is there every month. And of course, if you want to know how these superhero movie brackets are going to uh, play themselves out, you have to subscribe to the Patreon. Like our uh, loyal patrons right now, Ray, Russell, and Justin, who's right there. Join me in the Patreon elite. Thank you, Justin. Yes. That's what I like, a team player. Uh, right. Yes, very good. Yes, yes, pander to us. All right, so yeah, so uh, if you can, please uh, subscribe to the Patreon or pick yourself up with Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. You can find everything I just mentioned all in one place. That's Linktree, L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. All right, Little Hellfire, where can the people find you? Yes, I know everything's in the show notes. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, you kids oh, what? Uh, no, no, I was going to say, uh, Remember the uh, blue chew. Oh, blue oh, chew. Sponsor us. <laughs> if it's good enough for Joe Rogan, it's good enough for me. There we go. Bing. Can you wait until it's done? But whatever. You guys want to hang? Oh, out oh there's a drop. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire, on Instagram at Lil Hellfire sixty nine, and of course on TikTok at Lil Hellfire sixty nine. Blue chew sponsor us. Somebody was trying to sneak it in. Bigger is better. And shut your filthy mouth. Charlie Esser. I'm just going to say there's lots of testosterone replacement products on the market. We would be happy to take any of your money. Um, but if you would like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail that at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. I lost my train of thought. And if you'd like to follow me on the Twitter when I live tweet things when I feel like it, uh, which
which I may do someday again when things are interesting and new, you can do so at C H A R L I E. Yes, S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing. Thank you, Maz. Who am I? That's Maz Mansour! Don't you know his name? Put some love on that name. Come full circle. We start with Maz, we end with Maz. As all things should. Hey, well. All right, everyone. Thank I you. I would say it was super connected, but that's the next show. <laughs> anyway, for another week, that's right, Little Hellfire, we have been your capes. Ampersand. Lunatics. I guess. And thank you for joining us in the chat room, Justin. Any of you listening, if you watch us live, you can join us in the chat room. Hey, and you know when it's live? That time, we went at 8 o'clock on our Friday night. They're all living their lives. They're not doing the like the week. There's nothing to be this show, Lil. We do many shows. Yeah, and I'm yeah, going really to well, you can't interact. No, but, you know, then they can call in. If they want to interact beforehand, they can call True. in beforehand. Feedback. Yeah, see? Feed oh, our back. Now, maybe Tuesday on the CW, I guess. I guess I'll live tweet that.